Welcome to episode 133 of the Crazy Sock Lady podcast. My name is Kay and this is my YouTube channel where I share all about my knitting, crocheting, and sometimes various other crafting adventures. Today is Monday, March 22nd. I can't believe we're already almost to the end of March. I realize today that I have not yet recorded a Scrappy Sunday um, chat video for this month or a Q&A video, and it just seems like I just did those for February. So it's crazy. I feel like this year is going pretty quickly. Um, so I've got to get on the ball with a couple of things to finish up the month of March here. I hope that you all are doing well. I hope that you are relaxing with your making, that you've got some coffee or some type of beverage, and you're ready to jump right in and chat about all the things. So today I have a couple of finished objects to share with you, a few works in progress, some things that have arrived in the mail. We have a giveaway winner, two giveaway winners actually from episode 132 to announce, as well as a new giveaway. I think we're gonna do two giveaways on this episode as well. A lot of exciting stuff. Get comfy and let's jump right in. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as The Crazy Sock Lady, and we do have a group for this podcast on Ravelry. I will have links right down below to this video in the description box to everywhere that you can find me. Links to shops that I talk about, project pages for the things that I'm working on. All of that's gonna be right there for you. Let's chat finished objects first. I have two, both of them are for my husband, Eric. Let's put the coffee down. <laughs> okay, so I finished Eric's socks. These are out of Opal Sweet and Spicy, and I believe the color number was 8611. It's in the project page, but it seems that nobody can find this anymore. Um, I, like I said, purchased it years and years and years ago. No clue where I got it from, so I'm not surprised that nobody can find it anymore. But um, I love how these worked up. I believe I knit these on 9-inch circulars, so I would have done a US 0 2 millimeter, 64 stitches for these. Um, 20 rounds for the cuff, knit to purl to ribbing. And then just plain vanilla, slip stitch, heel flap, gusset, my favorite toe. Basically just a vanilla socks on nine inch circulars pattern. Only difference is I did a knit to purl to ribbing for the cuff and not knit one purl one. So I'm super pleased with these. He'll be happy that he can put these in his, um, dash of socks now and start wearing these. He really liked the colors and that and how they worked up. The next finished object is Eric's stocking. It is not blocked yet, which is ridiculous. It's been done, did I finish it Friday, I think? I said Saturday, I'm gonna block this. Sunday, I'm gonna block this. It's Monday, I still have not <laughs> blocked it. So ridiculous, because it does not take long to block it. But it is done. This is the Fresh Pine Pattern by Ursula Almeida. And you can see especially the toe area and the heel are really just what needs blocked. Um, the collar work itself could use a little bit of smoothing, but it's not, not too bad. Just basically that heel. So I am so happy with how this came out. I love this truck with the tree. And then I loved doing these pine trees down here. The yarn that I used for this is Knit Picks Palette in the colors um, Pimento is the red, Ash is the gray, and then just their plain bare palette undyed for um, the main color. Did the little I cord hanger, is it called for? So much fun. So I've gotta get this blocked and get a picture of Eric with it. That's what I've done with both of the boys when I finished theirs, is forced them to pose for a picture so that I had that photo um, of them with the finished stocking and I put it in my journal, but then I think it's just nice to have that photo as well. Let's see, I think that's it about 
that I did start my stocking. So I'll show this again if I get it blocked before next week. Hopefully I will. <laughs> my stocking I have in a bag by Stolen Minutes, the same bag that all of the stockings are been in, which I think is so much fun. And I picked, I did not print the main page, but there's a little photo right here. So I picked the Holiday Chalet. I'm not very far. I did finally finish the top this morning. That's all I got so far. <laughs> so I am ready. I think I have to do two rows and then it's time to start the first chart. So hopefully by next week, I'm still, there'll be more to show then. I'm still doing 30 minutes of knitting. That's what I'm spending that on in the morning is just working on my stockings. And it's so exciting to think that they're almost done. Like this is the last one. I can't believe that I'm almost done with all of our stockings. And I'm gonna have them done as long as I don't lose steam on this one. I don't wanna jinx myself. I should have them done before we're even to like the middle of the year. That's crazy to me. And it's gonna kind of be perfect timing wrapping up these stockings because then it's gonna be full on socks for summer sock camp, which video probably coming next week with full information about summer sock camp. So make sure you keep your eyes peeled for that because it's gonna have information on some sponsors for this year and how you can get their exclusive items for camp, how and when. So you do not wanna miss that video. Uh, make sure you turn your notifications on if you have not here on YouTube and Instagram. But yeah, that it's probably coming next week. So um, probably by the time I finish my stocking, it's gonna be full on socks all the time, which is pretty normal for me anyways, but it'll be even more so with summer sock camp. So I'm really excited about all of the fun stuff coming up. Okay. The only other finished object I brought down to show you guys. So I'm still working on the new sock designs. I am, and I feel like I'm not going to show those again, probably until they're ready because I can only show <laughs> the back of the sock so much, so many times. Um, but I'm still working on those. I am working on a pair of socks um, for sock camp that I can't show yet. Not a design, but something for sock camp. So I can't show that yet. What else? There was something else that I was working on that I can't show yet, but I can't think of what it is at the moment. Um, still working on the share a pair of socks. I feel like there's so many things that are still going and a couple things I just can't show yet that I just brought two down today my stocking and then a pair of socks that I'm working on for Eric. And this is in a bag that is by Vita of So Crazy Crafter. And here's the, this is the camp enamel pin from last year's summer sock camp. So cute. So there will be a enamel pin for this year's camp and some fun things. Um, that's another thing you'll just want to keep an eye out for. Make sure your notifications are on. But I have started Eric Socks with the March Yarnable colorway. So pretty. This was Celtic Fairy. And I cast these on on St. Patrick's Day. So the goal, I'm pretty sure I said last week on here, was that I wanted to finish the other pair of socks for him and cast these on on St. Patrick's Day since it's a St. Patrick's Day kind of themed yarn. And I did just that. I am not far at all. <laughs> there it is. I love that pop of that neon green. And I'm actually doing the Rhinebeck Rumi's sock, but the, it's kind of hard to see in this yarn. And plus, I'm not very far into the pattern. So that makes it harder to see as well. Um, I'm going to continue doing it even if I can't see it that much in the pattern because I love the fabric and the fit of the Rhinebeck Rumi sock. And I've never knit Eric a pair of them. So I'm interested for to see like what he thinks of the fit of them because I think the 
Rhinebeck Rumi's pattern makes for such a good fit on a sock. So I'll be intrigued to see what he thinks. But I'm doing them on nine inch circulars, so a US zero. I use a US zero with nine inch because my gauge is looser on them. So I go down a needle size and 64 stitches. That's what I always cast on for Eric socks. So not a whole lot done on those, but I'm hoping to make some good progress on them this week. It's been kind of tough, I feel like, because I do, I have a lot of projects going right now. And like I said, a lot of them are like the designs or stuff for camp that you'll see in the video next week, but <laughs> I just haven't been able to show them yet. So not a ton to show this week as far as progress on other things. I did work a little bit on my Musselberg hats. I did not bring them down, but I do want to remind you guys that the Musselberg hat knit along is going on in the Crazy Sock Lady Ravelry group. And that ends, I believe, April 15th. We have over 200 finished Musselberg hats in the finished objects thread. And we have a ton of prizes back here in this cabinet ready to give away when that knit along ends. So make sure if you want to participate, you jump in, you still have plenty of time to get a Musselberg hat done. We do have the coupon code as well that Yuzolda Teague gave us. It is 25% off. The code is Musselberg Cal. So make sure you head over and take advantage of that coupon code. Even if you don't want to knit one for the knit along, you have that coupon code available to you if you want to just add that to your library and then knit it later on. So I think that's pretty much it. It's kind of a short and sweet as far as the knitting goes this week, but that's okay. Some weeks are gonna be like that. And now we're gonna chat giveaway winners. So I did draw the winners from episode 132. We have the Simply Serving package and our winner for that is Tina Carter. So congratulations, Tina. If you will just get in touch with me at crazy sock lady podcast at gmail.com, give me your shipping information and I can get that sent out to you. Then we have the pattern that was donated by Irene of the three ply podcast and Irene designs. And this is her get shorty socks and our Winifer or Winifer. Her name is Jennifer. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay. Our winner is Jennifer Prusinowski. It'll be right here. So congratulations, Jennifer. If you will just get in touch with me and give me your Ravelry name so that I can have Irene send that pattern over to you on there. All right. Mail time. And then we do have a giveaway, a couple giveaways for this episode. So I received some yarn from Alaska of Sinful Yarns and just look how pretty those are together. So perfect for spring. So the mini skein is Robin's Egg is the colorway. It is an 85% superwash merino wool, 15% nylon, 20 gram mini skein. And then the full skein is spring blitz. Just like I said, a perfect for spring. And this is on the same base and is just a 100 um, gram skein of yarn. So pretty. So definitely head over and check out Alaska's shop. She's a new yarn dyer. She's out of Utah and my goodness, those are gorgeous. I can't get over those. Those need to be socks ASAP for spring. I had ordered some yarn from Kirby Werby back in December. This is the first yarn I've ever ordered from her and it arrived on Saturday. So this is her Rose Apothecary Remix colorway. I'd ordered this on a pre-order. Look how pretty that is. This is on her soft and squishy base, which is a 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon Blend. And I had said I 
recorded a vlog on Saturday and I opened this on the vlog and I said I thought it would be perfect for spring, but I actually think I'm gonna save it for summer and cast it on in the summer. Just that bright, bright green and bright yellow is so good. These beauties. So I received these from Addison of Ruby and Roses yarn. And this is the first yarn I've ever had of hers. I've followed her for so long and she is so talented. And I'm blown away by how pretty these are. So this first one is her Dumbledore's Army colorway. It's wanting to focus back there. There we go. There's her tag and here's the yarn. Oh, look how pretty those speckles right there. So this is on her rose gold base, which is 437 yards, 100 grams. It's an 80-15-5 base, which it's 80% superwash merino, 15% nylon, and 5% gold Stellina. Can you guys see that gold Stellina in there? It's hard for me to tell if it's showing up on the camera, but man, it is beautiful. That is my favorite right there. So this is for sure going to be socks. I'm loving some of these colors that I've been getting lately because they're so, I truly think it's the, the seasons changing here that has me just so inspired to knit with bright colors right now. But just seeing the, the different things starting to bloom here and thinking of all the flowers and all of the things that I've not really had the opportunity to have at some of the places that we've lived, I'm just, it just has me so excited about all the colors of spring and summer and these bright colors are just feeding my soul. I don't know, <laughs> they're making me so excited. So this is gonna have to be socks for sure. And then she also sent this colorway, which I have loved this colorway of hers for so long. I can't tell you on how many occasions I have almost ordered a sweater's quantity of this yarn. So this is her Lucky Penny colorway. I mean, it is just gorgeous. I am going to have to one day make a sweater of this, but she sent this along for me to design a sock with. So you guys will see this pretty soon. And this is on her 8515 base. So an 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon, 437 yards to 100 grams. This is her soft rose base. Amazing colorway. I love it so much. Okay, I have a couple like tiny little goodies over here. I'm going to set them all right here. So Rosalie of Roro's Crafty Corner, all shops are going to be linked down below. Um, she sent over some sweet packages of Progress Keepers. So here's two of them. They are so pretty and bright. So she sent these over for giveaways, prizes, however I saw fit to use them. And then she also sent this one over for me. Again, it's just like perfect spring, summer is what these colors make me think of. So I can't wait to use those. And then Sarah of Pacific Moon Knits sent over some progress keepers as well. So look how cute. <laughs> Actually, let me take this out. Might be easier to hold it sideways when it's out of the package. Look how cute that is. Little full, full focus. Look how cute that is. So <laughs> precious. And then she's got the little ring markers on there as well. So she sent over a green one and then a red one to use as a giveaway or a prize or again, however I saw fit to use. And then 
she sent over a package of some for me. So this one looks like a lavender honey cupcake. I am always just so amazed at these polymer clay. And this one looks like a coffee bean. Oh my goodness, I just saw the back of this. Okay, I gotta show you guys the back of this. It does not wanna focus. There it is. She put CSL on the back for Crazy Sock Lady. That is so cute. I even opened these up and looked at all of these and I missed that the other day. So cute. The knee. Moon and a star. And then some little ring stitch markers. These are my favorite kind, just the tiny little rings. So thank you so much to all of these amazing businesses who sent these items over for prizes and giveaways and for me to knit up some socks with just so awesome of you guys if you are a maker and you want to donate to the podcast please don't hesitate to reach out to me i have said many times over and over again um, and i will keep on saying it that i love and feel so honored to be able to share your business here in my space so please don't hesitate to reach out to me so we are going to do a giveaway let me set these aside we are going to do a giveaway for one of each of these so we will do the red progress keeper this camera is just having issues today We'll do the Red Progress Keeper from Pacific Moon Knits, and then we will do one of the sets from Roro's Crafty Corner. And just, all you have to do is comment down below this video. That will ensure you to be eligible to win, and I will announce the winners of each of these on episode 134. So I think that's pretty much it for today's episode. over the weekend what did we do or since last episode i guess um i did record the vlog on saturday so you can check out what we got up to on saturday if you want to watch that i will have it linked for you so yesterday on sunday we went to a little nursery garden shop right here in town and picked out a couple of things for the yard so i have been wanting a lilac bush for so long and I've said it many times we've just never really lived anywhere that I've been able to plant one that it would have done well well we are back where it will do good so I was so excited to get a lilac bush I've been saying since we moved here I want to plant a lilac bush my dad I'm sure he still has it I haven't been around the side of his house and I couldn't tell you how many years but when I was growing up there there was a lilac bush and when the windows will be open, you could smell the lilacs. Or if you would go outside around the side of the house, you could smell it. The bush was just this huge, gorgeous bush. And I loved when it would bloom. So we went there yesterday and we I was like, okay, I want to look for a lilac bush for sure. We were we looked at a couple other things, got a couple ideas of things we want to plant. But when we got to the lilacs, they had a couple different varieties. And I was studying the pictures on each one trying to be like okay which one was it that my dad had and then I saw it it is the Pocahontas lilac and I am so excited right now it's in a pot we have not planted it yet um, I'm looking right now I see where I'm going to plant it but the issue dogs so <laughs> I'm not going to put it directly up against our fence but where I want to put it is back by the fence in the very back of the yard like if you're just looking right out here it's in the very back and we have dogs all around us always it never fails we have dogs ourselves. but 
the dogs, our dogs run against this fence line with the neighbor's dogs, and then they run against that fence line with the neighbor's dogs. So I'm gonna have to get something to put around the lilac bush to keep the dogs from trampling it. Mostly Chloe, Gracie's not big enough to trample it because it is a pretty big, um, not a huge bush, but it's not like I'm getting it from seeds or a bulb or however they come. It's already started. So I just need to get some stuff to put around it so that they kind of are like, hopefully Chloe's like, okay, I don't want to walk over that or run through that <laughs> is what she will do. So right now it is um, still in the pot. We got it in sitting out back of the house in a flower bed um, that the dogs are staying out of because of the fencing I bought. So far that is working. Eric did catch Gracie in the one right over here, but that's because I did not think about the fact that she can get up on the wall by the patio. So she went around the fencing up on the wall by the patio and climbed in there. I'm gonna put a little gnome right there so that she can't get on the wall. Problem will be solved, but um, anyways, the fencing is working from last week. So right now it's sitting out there. We also bought a honeysuckle bush, which I'm also so excited about. I remember those were at just wild at my uncle's house. He didn't have them planted or anything. They were wild um, at his house and I loved going to the honeysuckle bushes and sometimes that he would just have a bowl of them so i'm very excited about that it's potted as well um we did buy a pot to put it in just to keep it on the back of the house we're not quite sure what we're going to do with it yet if we're going to plant it or just keep it in the pot we're not very experienced with this stuff we're learning as we go <laughs> eric has got some seeds that he has started for the garden started inside so that's exciting. Um, we're trying to decide all the things that we want to have. We're thinking green beans, squash, zucchini, green peppers, tomatoes. I think he's gonna do some jalapenos. What else were we talking about? He is gonna do some potatoes. Spinach, maybe? I can't remember. We have a ton of things <laughs> that we want to plant. Um, I think that was kind of the list we came up with. So he's got a couple of things started, seeds in the house, and then more supplies to start other things when it is time. I think it's gonna be so fun to watch those things grow and kind of learn as we go about doing all of these things. And we're already talking about expanding the raised bed that we have out there and making it larger if it goes well this year, or just doing like a completely separate bed. I am dying to plant wildflowers. I keep seeing just packets. Yesterday they had a bunch of different packets um, or like not really like packets. They were big bags of just wildflower seeds that you, you know, dig up the ground, spread the seeds. I so badly want a wildflower patch that I can then go cut and have fresh flowers in the house throughout the summer but I don't know the best spot in our yard. So we haven't been here through the summer to see, we have a lot of very mature trees. So we're gonna have a lot of shade coverage. We're assuming where the raised bed is, they got good sun there because that was their garden bed. We're just not sure where else we're gonna have the best sun because everything that I'm reading on the wildflower bags, they need sun. So I'm not sure unless I did it in the front yard and I don't know that that I don't know if that's crazy to plant like just set up a little area that I would have wildflowers. I don't know. Have you planted wildflowers? Do you have any tips? <laughs> Let me know below if you do. But okay, I think I have rambled on enough. The dryer has kicked off, so it is time for me to go switch laundry. I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode. Congratulations to our winners from episode 132. Good luck to those of you commenting down below to enter for the giveaway for this episode. And again, a huge thank you to the businesses who sent in items since last episode. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you again next week for the next episode. Until then, happy making. Bye.